Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be creating this landing page with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's get started. All right, so I got my index.html, my styles.css, and my app.js. I'm not gonna lie, it feels good to start a project and I have to install a shit ton of packages. So uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, image abbreviation and just press enter. And uh, you get this boilerplate for the title. I'm just gonna name it Overo, which is the company's name that we're building this landing page for. And um, so I'm trying to think the approach. Maybe we should um, write all of the HTML then do the styles and then add JavaScript at the end, or maybe I should uh, break it down by section. So um, I think I might do that. I think I might just break it down by section. I think that's the best thing to do. So uh, let's go ahead and add our styles. We're going to do a link CSS and I made my styles with an S so add a little S there and let's go ahead and link the JavaScript as well. I'm going to do a um, script. SRC and it's going to be app JS. All right, so let's go ahead and write some HTML and then we'll head over to uh, CSS and start styling it a bit. Uh, but before we do that, actually open up your browser and uh, open up a live server and have the page open up here. Let me refresh because we still see Rovero at the top for the title. And let's get started. So inside of the body, we're going to do a div. And this is going to have a class of hero section. And then we're going to have another div in here. And this is going to have a class of hero overlay. So we're going to add a background image to the hero section. And then we're going to add a overlay, like a gradient overlay. It's going to look nice. Uh, and underneath this, we're going to have another div, a bunch of divs. <laughs> and class is going to be hero container like that and in here we're going to have our logo but before we actually do that i said we go ahead and try to get this image and stuff working so head over to in the description i'm going to have the images the image folder and a google drive so just download the images all right so once you download the images just put it inside of an assets folder and we should be all set so i'm going to refresh again to make sure so let me go ahead and open this back up all right, so let's head over to the styles and there's actually one thing we do have to do first let's do our global reset. So you want to do a box size in border box, a padding of zero and a margin of zero margin of zero. All right. And we also are going to um, add a Google font. So let's head over to Google fonts. Back down here, Google Fonts, and the font we're gonna add is Poppins. Best font, in my opinion. Well, it used to be my favorite. Used to be uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, uh, but I like Poppins now. And we're gonna do a uh, regular. We're gonna grab a uh, semi bold and bold. I think that should be good. And I just grabbed it, just grab the import. So just copy this, make sure it's copied and head back over to styles and just paste it at the top of this file here. Oh, it didn't copy. Nice. All right. I just pasted it here. And now here we can also do a font family and just do poppins comma sans serif like that. All right, so let's go ahead and write some CSS. So first thing we're gonna grab is our hero section. Let me go ahead and open this up here. I can get all this right. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our hero section. Right down here, we're gonna do hero dot section. And we're gonna do a position relative. We're going to do a Z index of one, a height of a hundred VH. And we're going to do a background and it's going to be URL. 
and we're going to grab that background image inside of our assets folder so we're going to do a dot slash and then it should auto complete so do assets slash hero image so i think once we save we should see the image now so as you can see we can see the image but um it's going off the screen you can't really see the like the entire image so to fix that we're going to do a background uh size i believe background size we're going to do cover and as you can see it fixed it and um we also going to add a pattern we're going to do 30 pixels and then we're going to do auto like that and we also going to do a display of flex all right so now to add that gradient color to our um hero section we're going to do a hero dash overlay And for now, I'm just going to give it a background color of blue or just we can do black and then just hover over it and just change the opacity to maybe like that. And maybe we shouldn't do um black. Let's do like blue. Blue for now. And hover over it and just change the opacity. Use this little um, this little bar here and just go down. Cause we're gonna go to uh ui gradients to grab our uh, gradient i mean i got it here but it's better to just copy it from there so we're gonna do opacity uh, we gotta put the thing so opacity is going to be 0 0.83 which we don't need well once we add our gradient we're gonna need it so we're gonna do a position absolute i don't know why this is an auto position absolute and we're going to do a top of zero and we should just need to do a left of zero and let's see so we don't see it because uh we need to add a height so we're gonna do a height of 100 percent uh and we're gonna add a z index of negative one so i wonder why we don't see it let's see uh hero overlay let me make sure i spelled it right in the hero overlay so yeah we're grabbing that overlay there hero overlay uh let's do a um a right of zero and a bottom of zero there we go now we can see it um there's actually a faster way um instead of typing all of this i believe it's just inset of zero if i'm not mistaken so i think that's like all four let's see if i'm not mistaken i yeah i believe it's so to the top bottom right and left properties so instead of typing you know top bottom left right please do inset of zero so let's do that and there we go as you can see that looks nice right there but it looks better with the gradient so let's head over to you i don't think did i grab it from ui gradients i forgot where i grabbed it because i don't think ui gradients is exist anymore oh it's still here never mind when i tried it it didn't work and uh i'm not sure which one that i used i know it's a blue and it had like maybe it's very blue um hmm. maybe it's better for me just to type it because i think i forgot the <laughs> the gradient i use for this so let's just type it out so background i'm gonna do background and we're gonna do a linear gradient and we're gonna do 90 degrees comma h s l a I'm gonna do 191 comma 75 percent comma 60 percent i'm gonna do one and after that we're going to do a zero percent trying to make sure i get this right zero percent comma hsla and do 248 87 percent 36 percent uh i gotta fix that 
and one. And then after that parentheses, we're just going to do a hundred percent. So good news is we don't got to type this out again. We'll just copy and paste it from here. Let's go ahead and save this. And now we should have the gradient that I use, which looks better. I'm not going to lie though. That blue we just had kind of, <laughs> kind of looked nice. Um, probably should have kept that. I'm not gonna lie. All right. So that's our overlay. So, um, since we're here, we can just grab the hero container as well. Do hero container. And in here, we're going to do a width of 75% and a margin of auto. And we're going to do a display of flex and flex, flex direction column. And align item center. And a gap of 30. All right, 30 pixels, sorry. All right, so that's that. So let's head back over to our index and write some stuff inside of our hero container. Open it up here. Index. All right. So in here, we're going to have a logo box so we're going to do a div and this is going to have a class name of logo let's just do logo container and we're gonna have our image our little play button image so we're going to do dot slash assets slash i believe i just named it logo so a little play button there and we're just going to do a um, logo for the alt and then after this, we're going to have a H1 with a class of logo text. And this is going to have Wavero Media. All right. So as you can see, <laughs> that play button's really big. Sheesh. All right. Uh, so right after this div, we're going to have another div. And this won't have a class name, but in the side, this div, we're gonna have a H1 with a class of hero hitting. And this is gonna say, we are launching soon. Uh, there we go. And we have a paragraph under this with a class of hero info. I suck at naming class names. I kind of, um, this project I made, I want to say probably like two hours. Didn't really take me that long to do, but just wanted to make like a beginner friendly project. Uh, so in here, I'm going to paste some lorem. Um, to get this lorem, all you got to do is just literally let's do lorem and then it should, you should get an emit abbreviation for it and just press enter and just save it like that. All right, so let's go ahead and style this up and next we're gonna do our countdown. So let's go ahead and head back over to the CSS and let's grab that logo container. Logo container. And we're going to do a display flex. So the image and the text can be side by side. And we're going to do a margin of auto and this is going to center it. As you can see, it shifted over to the right a bit. And um, actually, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. We're just going to do a align item center because we already did a display flex, so we don't need margin auto. We can just do a justify content center to center it and we do a gap of three pixels there we go so now as you can see that play button is a little bit too big so let's go ahead and style it up now it's going to do dot logo container i'm going to grab the image in here and we're going to do a width of 50 pixels like that as you can see it is perfect now so now let's grab the logo text And we're going to do a color of FFF, just white. 
and we're gonna do a text shadow of one pixels one pixel and three seven three seven three seven three seven like that um we're gonna use this text shadow a lot i probably should have made um should have forgot the css variables should probably should have made something with that because we use this a lot so um just make sure you got this on standby to copy so as you can see it looks nice and that text shadow makes it pop looks really nice all right so underneath here we're gonna grab the hero hitting into a margin bottom of 20 pixels a line height of 1.2 and we're gonna do a color of f f f and we're gonna do a font weight actually we're just gonna do a text align center and like i said keep this text shadow on standby just paste it in there you can see we're launching soon nice all right so let's go ahead and grab that paragraph right here style that up a bit let's do uh hero um info and we do a font size of 20 pixels a line height of 30 pixels a font weight of 400 i think i messed up a bit uh, we're gonna do a color of white and a text align center as well and we're just gonna grab this and paste it right here um so now it's time for our countdown so let's go ahead and do that so let's head back over to the index and right underneath this div here so we got the p and we got a div so right underneath here we're gonna have another div and this is going to have a class of countdown countdown all right and we're gonna do a div and in here we're gonna have a span and this is gonna have an id of days you know, you don't have to put anything. I mean, we could for now, I guess. So let's go ahead and put um three, but we're going to use JavaScript um, to put text there. But for now, we could just do that. And for we're going to do a P tag underneath and it's going to say days. And what we can do is actually copy this div and paste it three more times. One, two, three. Oh, wait, what? What did I just do? All right. So this div here, copy. So we already copied it once. Inside there. So I got an extra div. Take that off. All right. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. Save that. So we got days, and we're gonna change this one to hours. and change the p to hours and then we got minutes and seconds so we're going to do minutes and minutes and seconds all right nice all right so uh for now we could just for the hours we're going to do uh we can do like 10 and minutes we can do like 30 and for seconds we can do like 55 all right so let's go ahead and style this stuff up a bit so head over to the styles open it up here and so for our countdown so we're gonna do countdown we're going to do a display of grid And we're going to do a grid template columns. And we're going to do a repeat of four, comma, min max. 
parentheses we'll do zero comma one fr all right so we got a nice grid there um and four columns so four equally equal columns and then we're going to do a gap of 40 pixels a color of white we're going to just do fff and we're going to do a z index of one and a text align center a font of bold we'll do font weight bold and we also going to add this text shadow all right paste that in there and there we go nice so now we're going to grab our span inside of our countdown so we do a countdown countdown span and we're just going to do a font size of 70 pixels actually gonna, oh, yeah, i think that's good font size 70 pixels and we're going to grab the p tag now countdown p and in here we're going to do a margin top of three pixels a text transform of uppercase a font size of 14 pixels and a line height of let's do 1.4 all right so it does look a little bit off um so what we're gonna do i think if we add a line height here do a line height of 80 pixels that makes it look better and let's add a line height here as well like 14 pixels bring it down a little bit that looks nice all right so now i think it's time to write some javascript i think it's time <laughs> let's head over to the javascript all right so let's go ahead and grab our elements uh, we're going to be grabbing the days hours minutes and seconds and we're going to use get element by id i'm going to copy this and paste it over inside of the app um so like i said we're using get element by id we're grabbing the days the hours the minutes and the seconds and um now we're going to do some stuff with our local storage and the whole reason why we're doing that is because as you can see my timer disappeared i deleted all of the the text inside of the spans because we're going to use javascript to um insert the text um so for now you can just go ahead and delete it if you want so like i was saying um we're going to be doing some work with the local storage and the whole reason why we want to do that is because whenever we refresh a page or if a user leaves this page the timer keeps going no matter what so for example if you leave this page at 10 hours 30 minutes and 50 seconds and you come back an hour from now uh, you open up your browser come back to this page an hour from now it should say nine hours and 30 minutes and 50 seconds so that's what we want so to do that we're going to do that in time and this is going to equal local storage dot get item and it's going to do in time in parentheses like that me in quotes sorry and now we're going to check um if it's not in time so if it's not in time we want um to set our um our current time to what we want it to be so we're going to do if so if it's not in time in time we're going to let target date And this is going to equal just new date like that. All right. Uh, I messed up. Sorry. All right. And like I said, we're going to set our own time and date. So what we're going to do is let me just copy this over and just paste this in there. So we're just going to do target date dot set seconds. And in parentheses, we're just going to do target target date dot get seconds. And we're going to do plus 33 
So this is just basically set in our own time. So we set in 33 seconds. So you can actually change this number to whatever you want, want it to be. So if you want for want it to start at 40 seconds, you can. Uh, we're going to start at 50 minutes. So we're going to do plus 50 minutes. And for set hours, we're going to do uh, 20 hours. And for the days, uh, we're going to do get date. You're going to do plus three. But I'm actually going to change this to five so you guys can see. And uh, what we can actually do is um, maybe change this once we start seeing the timer. Um, so like I said, you could just change this, these numbers to whatever you want. But uh, I just did five days, 20 hours, 50 minutes, and 40 seconds. <laughs> just a random time. All right, so now we're gonna um, convert our target date into a timestamp and store it inst inside of our um, local storage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in time and we're gonna do target date dot get time. Like that, that's a function. And then we also going to do local storage dot set item. So uh, set item and we're just going to do in time and quotes and then do in time without quotes like that all right so you won't see anything because now we're gonna uh we're gonna create a function so you can see the the text um the timer so we're gonna create a function and it's gonna be update display update display and this is going to take distance. And in here is a bunch of math. I got all this off Stack Overflow. Love that site. I'm um, not this smart. I suck at math. <laughs> but um, so yeah, just pause the video and copy this. Uh, just a bunch of math stuff uh, to get the seconds, the minutes, hours, and the days. And now we're going to um, actually set the text content inside of our HTML with JavaScript with text content. So we're going to do days L that text content and it's going to equal to days because we get a number from this, this math.floor and same with hours, minutes and seconds. But um, if you save it, you won't see anything because we actually have to finish. Um, so at, now we're going to um, do a let interval and this is just going to be set interval interval I know I probably say that weird and function you could do an arrow function if you want and in here we're going to do let now and this is going to equal new date dot get time get time and then we're going to do let distance and this is just going to be in time minus now All right so now uh we're going to do an if statement so if our countdown reaches zero uh we want to display all zeros but this is just a practice project <laughs> um i'm sure we're not gonna go back and see if this is displayed but you never know so uh, we're gonna do if we're gonna do distance is less than or equals to zero we're just going to clear the interval interval i say that word so weird interval and we we'll do interval and then we're going to also update the display to just zero so just do zero in there and we also got to do a return like that all right so now we shouldn't see anything but now with one line of code all we have to do is do an update display to distance because we made a function that takes in the distance and now we're setting it to this and there we go and now we should see it and this is basically so we let now equals the new date that get time so that's the current time now and then our distance is basically our in time date which is this here the one that we set minus now and then we're just sending that over to our um, update display function and here are the results nice all right so um we could add a one second delay there if you want to but um don't really need it 
and then um down here we're gonna do it update display do end time minus new date dot get time like that all right uh, save it nice so that's our timer timer uh and like i said uh once we refresh so let's just see let's stop it at 30 so 50 minutes 30 um oh it actually refreshed wait it was actually refreshing all right so we got a little bug here let's see what's wrong with this so as you can see this is what we didn't want see how it's going back to what we what's the, what we started with so let's see what we did here and i think i see the issue so we got in time i think it has to be uppercase uh the t has to be uppercase and make sure right here let's refresh now and so as you can see it keeps going so that's that little mistake and like i said um so i'm gonna exit out this page at 50 minutes and 60 seconds let's see 49 minutes six seconds okay exit out and we're gonna go back to it in a few seconds blah blah uh let's see let's go back <laughs> and as you can see it went down um 10 seconds so yeah it um goes off your local storage which is nice that's what we want all right um now i believe we have to go back and write some uh html so let's head back over to html and finish up the page and then we're going to work on our modal we're going to head back to our javascript at the end but let's head back over to html and finish writing some html if i can find it where you at there we go all right so underneath this div so right underneath here two divs down from the seconds we're gonna have another div and this is just gonna have a class of btn container and in here we have a button and this button is gonna have an id of subscribe subscribe btn and we're just gonna say subscribe to newsletter all right let's see so there we go we got our button all right so underneath here we're gonna have our modal and um we're gonna see the modal now but we're going to make it disappear with css and then make it only appear when we click that button with javascript so we're gonna have a div um yeah let's have a div and this is gonna have a class of modal and also a id of my you could just do my modal like that all right and then we're gonna have a div in here and this is gonna have a class of modal content All right, and here inside of the modal content, we're gonna have another div, and this is gonna have a class of modal icon, and we have a span um, with a class of close. It's gonna be our X button, so we could just do um, at times like that. We should be able to see this actually. So as you can see, we see it there. And uh, so right underneath this modal icon div, we're gonna have another div. And this is gonna have a class of modal image. Modal image. And this is where we're gonna have our little, um, our little mail icon. So we're gonna do dot slash assets slash I believe it's mail PNG so as you can see it's right there 
And you can just do um mail, I guess. But all I didn't really spend that much time on um, doing um accessibility with this one. Uh so that so div. So under the modal image div, we're gonna have another, we're gonna have a P. And this is going to have class of modal info. And it's just some lorem here. I'm just gonna copy this lorem over. Or we could have just did the snippet. <laughs> I need to go to sleep. Um, so on the P under the P, we're gonna have another div. And you're gonna have a class of modal form. And we're gonna have a P tag in here that just says receive updates on our launch. Alright. And then under the P, we're gonna have an input. Uh, type is going to be email. Name is going to be email and ID. Um, you could just do email. We're not going to do anything with it. Um, and placeholder is going to be enter your email. Self close and tag. All right. And we have a button. And this is going to say subscribe. All right. And you can also, we're going to also give this ID of submit, submit email like that. Nice. So as you can see, we got our modal there. It's not really looking like a modal. I'm not going to lie. All right. So let's go to the CSS and start styling this up a bit. Um, scroll down. So we count down. Let's go ahead and grab that button container. BTN dash container. I'm not gonna lie, I, I kind of like writing CSS. Um, I mean, I prefer Tailwind, but <laughs> you know, I kind of like this. Let's do justify center. All right, and <clears throat> we're gonna grab the button inside a button container. So, button container button and do a background color of F E F E and we're going to do an outline outline of none a border of none and a padding of 10 pixels top and bottom 20 pixels left and right and a border radius of 20 pixels. See how that looks? That's our newsletter button. Nice, looks nice. All right, so now it's time for our modal. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, let's do modal. So if we do this and do a display of none, everything disappears. So we don't wanna do that yet. We actually wanna style this up and then we're gonna hit it with that. <laughs> so let's do a position of fixed. Uh, we're going to do a Z index of negative one. Actually, a Z index of one. And we do a left of zero and a top of zero. And we're also going to do a width of 100%. And a height of 100%. Overflow of auto and a padding of 30 pixels. All right. So this actually isn't the actual modal itself. This is the background that we're going to use to like whenever the modal is open, we want the option to click off the modal. Me personally, that's what I always do. I never really use these icons to close out of things. I just click on the outside of what's open and it closes. So that's what we want. So this actually is going to have a background color of RGBA. 
and it's gonna be zero comma zero zero comma zero point four for opacity right, and as you can see we got that little black thing so that's that's what we want to show whenever the modal is open plus the modal on top of that so now uh now we're actually styling a modal here so we're gonna do a modal content and uh, we're gonna do a background color of fe fe and we're gonna do a margin of 25 vh and then we're gonna do auto that should like kind of center it a little bit i think that's a um really good way to wait why did it look like that oh okay that makes sense we gotta add a max width max width of 600 pixels because we don't want it that big there we go it's a little weird for a second i'm like <laughs> uh, we're gonna add a border radius of um let's do like 10 pixels and we're gonna do a text align center and we're also gonna add a padding uh, 50 pixels top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right all right and i believe that is everything for that there we go uh the overflow auto maybe we don't want that okay maybe we do want that <laughs> I don't know why it's all the way down there. Hmm. I think I know why, because we still have a style this up a bit. This shouldn't be that, that big anyway, right? So let's, um, let's grab the modal icon. And we're just going to do a text align left. So that uh, X actually text align right sorry the x can just go right here on the right side and now let's grab that modal image so the modal can get a little bit smaller and i can stop freaking out <laughs> uh, we're gonna do a width of 100 pixels and then a margin of auto all right as you can see it's off but now we just gotta do a modal image. And we're just gonna grab the image itself and just do a width of 100%. So as you can see, now it is perfect. All right, and now we can actually take off this overflow auto. All right. So modal image, that. All right, now let's grab the close I'm gonna do a color of let's do a a not a a a yeah color gray and um we're also gonna do a font size of 28 pixels make it a little bit bigger and a font weight a bold all right perfect all right so that's the close and we can also add like a little hover effect to it so let's do a dot close hover and we just want the color to be like maybe maybe like dark gray so whenever you hover show that you're about to close and we can also do a uh, cursor pointer as well. All right. Nice. All right. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So let's grab the stuff inside of our modal now. So we're going to grab the modal form. Modal form. And we're just going to grab the P first paragraph. We're going to do a font size of 1.2 rim. Uh, we're gonna 
gonna do a font weight of bold. Oh my god, dude. Font weight of bold. I'm using this keyboard, I don't like it. A text transform of uppercase. A color of three seven three seven three seven. And we're gonna do a margin bottom of 10 pixels. Nice. All right. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, wait, P. All right, model form, all right. So let's grab the mobile form input now. I'm gonna do modal form and grab the input and this takes a bunch of stuff we're gonna do a display of inline block we're gonna do a margin bottom of 20 pixels we're gonna do a width of 100 percent do a height of 59 pixels do a padding of zero zero pixels let's just do zero uh, top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right and then we also gonna have a border and we're gonna do one pixel solid and you can do like a light gray so b e b e like that and we also gonna have a background color of just f9 F9. So it's not white, but it's a little little cream color. And do a border radius of 10 pixels. And we're gonna have a color for our text. It's gonna be four five four five. All right. And then a font size of 17 pixels. So let's take a look. And there we go. That looks nice. All right, so let's grab the form button now. Modal uh, form button. And this is going to have the same background as our um, our overlay. So let's just go over here and just copy this here and just paste it down here for our background. You can see it changed it. Nice. And we're gonna have a padding of 10 pixels top and bottom and 30 pixels left and right. And we're gonna have a border of none. And a border radius of 10 pixels. Access do 30 pixels and a uh, color F E F E and our famous text shadow. Let me scroll up a bit. I know it's somewhere up here and just paste that down here right quick. And there we go. Um, I think that looks nice. Uh, let's see. P input. I'm trying to make sure I did all this right. Uh, icons. Modal. All right. So for the modal info. Modal info. We actually just want to do a margin bottom of 20 pixels. There we go. Now it looks better. All right, so that's it. Uh, as you can see, it's still here, but we don't want it here. So let's head up to our modo itself and we're just gonna do a display of none. So to get rid of it. And now once we click on this button, where is the button container? Do a cursor pointer. Uh, is that it? Put a cursor pointer inside there. There we go. So now once we click on this button, 
we want the modal to pop up and that takes JavaScript. So let's head over and do that. All right, so right underneath all of the JavaScript that we wrote for our timer, uh, this way we're gonna write our modal JavaScript. I already grabbed the elements, uh, grab the modal, we get element by ID, uh, the button, which is the subscribe button right there. And also grab the span, which is that X inside of our the little X icon inside of our um, modal. And I use a uh, get element by class name for that one. So to make this work really simple, we're just going to add an on click to the button. So we're going to do on click. I can spell it right. And it's going to be arrow function. And we're just going to do a modal dot style dot display. And this is going to equal to block. So with that, once we click, it should open up the modal, but there's no way to close it. So now we're just going to add it on the click to that X there. And that's the span right there. So we're just going to do a span dot on click. And we're going to do a modal dot style dot display. And this is going to equal to none. So open, close. Oh, that didn't work. And I think I know why. So to grab the span, we actually got to do a index of zero like that. Let's see if that works. There we go. Open, close, open and close. All right. So once we open the modal, we want the option to close outside of the modal. So as you can see, once I click on the outside, it is it's remaining um, open. So to do that, another simple line of code, we're just going to do a window dot on click. And this is also going to be an arrow function. And um, this is also going to take a vent. So you can just do like an E in there. I can just write out a vent if you want. So I'm going to do if E dot target. So if that triple equals to modal, we just want to do a modal dot style dot display. And it's just going to equal to none like that. We're going to open and click on the outside. But if we click on this, it remains open. And I want to see if you guys can guess why. So um, as you can see, we're grabbing a modal here with get element by ID my modal. If you head over to the index HTML, my modal is um, the outside of the actual modal itself. So the modal itself is inside of this modal content. So all of this is protected uh, from that on click. And we're only adding that on click on side on this modal here. Um, it's outer div. <laughs> so um, once you open it, closes, open, closes. Nice. All right. So that is done. I believe we're all done with JavaScript. Um, we can actually close out of this and now we just got to do the bottom part of this. So head over to index and go ahead and underneath the subscribe button. So we don't even need this ID there. Uh, one, two, three. So three divs down. All right, <laughs> gonna do another div. And this is going to have a class of bottom hero. Bottom hero. And in here, we're gonna have a P and just gonna say copyright. I'm actually just gonna copy this over because you need to get that copyright symbol. Just go to Google and type it in uh, copyright. Um, symbol. I believe there's a HTML entity you can type in for that. But copyright 2023 with Vero Media Design by my name. Make sure you put my name, okay? I designed this. <laughs> um, 
I'm joking. You can put your name. Uh, we're gonna have a div, and it's gonna have a class of icons container. And here we're gonna have another div class is going to be icon. And in here we're gonna have our image, and the source is going to be our icon. So we go to assets. You can do dribble first if you want and change the alt to dribble. And what we can do is actually just copy this icon div and paste it one, two, three, four more times. All right, and just change up the image inside. So we got dribble, we got Facebook. We got LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Uh, what else we got? Um, Instagram. And last but not least, did we do Twitter? Twitter. Oh, Pinterest. I think I got too many. Pinterest. What if I spelled that right? As you can see, all our logos, is, logos are there, but they're huge. Let's just head over to the CSS and style this up a bit. So I believe we're actually done with the HTML. We can close out of this. And let me go ahead and open up the CSS for this. Underneath all of this. We're going to have a bottom hero. Grab P and we do a text align center. A margin bottom of 10. 10 pixels. A color of uh, F E F E. and our text shadow which is somewhere i just used it where is it there we go copy and paste all right so that's the paragraph element i mean that's the paragraph so it's this there uh so now let's do our icons so um let's grab the icons container And we're going to do a display of flex. So y'all should be side by side now. And we do a justify content of center. And we do a line item center. And we also do a gap of 10 pixels. All right, they're still, they're still pretty huge, but they nice and lined up. And now let's grab the icon itself. So the icon and we're gonna do a width of 30 pixels, a background color of white or FE FE, little cream color. And we're also gonna do a display of flex and a line item center. A justify content of center and a padding of six pixels and a border radius of a hundred percent. All right, so you can see they're still pretty huge, even though we did a width of 30 pixels. So, this is where the magic is about to happen. I'm gonna do an icon image, and all you gotta do is do a width of a hundred percent. And eh, no, what happened? I talked all that crap. Okay, I forgot the dot. There we go. <laughs> As you can see, they got smaller. Nice. All right, so we are going to need a media query. Um, so if you go to inspect, um, as you can see, all of that's is just coming off the screen and. It's just not really looking good at all. 
so um little media query so we're gonna do add media only screen uh only screen and yeah i still do the old media query this is the way i was taught in my boot camp um i know that there's like some complex ways and easier ways you can do this. i still have to learn that stuff um so we're gonna do a hero section so we grab the hero section and we're just gonna do a we're gonna do a height of fit content All right so with that as you can see now once we scroll it doesn't go past like it fits the content so let me just show you guys right quick let's take that off and as you can see the content is going underneath the um i mean it's overlapping like the actual hero section itself is just going outside of the box but with this one line of code oh, oh my god not that it fits the content no matter what all right so that's that and now we want to grab our countdown itself and we're just going to do a grid template columns and instead of um four rows we want it to repeat two there's gonna be two rows and we're still gonna keep the same min max min max i'm gonna do zero comma one fr like that so you can see now it is nice um our title there doesn't look great let's see hold on responsive let's see what's happening there right there Hmm. I gotta fix that. Um, I say we just go up here to our logo. Container logo text. And we could just do a font. We could bring down a font size a little bit to let's see. Let's do one room. See what that gets us. That's way too small. 1.2 rim. Like 1.5 rim. There we go. That looks better. Yeah, so just change the yeah, it looks better anyway. All right, so that's really it, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Um, hopefully, it wasn't too long. I, don't, I just got to edit the video and see how long it's been. Uh, but yeah, I try to explain it the best I can. Um, I know I suck at explaining things. I saw a comment not too long ago saying, you know, um, it's kind of like I don't know this stuff. I'm not going to lie. I don't know it well. That's, I'm still learning a lot. Um, I started learning code, I want to say, eight months ago or nine months ago and uh, i've been going hard uh a lot of the new people don't know um that i had a whole streak going on youtube I 190 days straight of me getting on here recording my journey every single day and i went 190 days straight um working on projects i really put in the time man it's crazy so um yeah i still have a bunch bunch to learn um and I just figured, you know, I'll do little tutorials like this one and like my full stack projects because I'm um, not going to lie. Doing those teach me a bunch of stuff. Um, like, for example, before this project, I never made a digital clock. And there we go. I got me a timer. <laughs> I know how to do it now. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's really it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And I appreciate all the support that I'm getting. I will see you guys next video. Peace. Thank you.